Now, we come in here. And this is something too, if you have a piece that has multiple features, and if you have a choice of where you put your most common, most uh, best features to deal with, put them directly across from two jaws. Put the other features across from two jaws. Um, not that we could do that with a square, but if we put this in here with the corners on here, it would just be harder to dial in because these are consistent surfaces we can work with and they're in line with the axis of the jaw being able to adjust. So come over here with my indicator and of course I'm going to just uh, put a zero on here and then I'm going to turn it around and this time I'm not going to play games. I'm actually going to go forward and backward a little bit. We're going to find where zero is. If I just arbitrarily pick a zero, it's sort of irrelevant. And you can see that I'm not uh, pushing, not pointing straight at this point. So I know I didn't want to come up a little better to get a better angle on it. So again, you want to find that point where it's at the lowest. So now we got it marked. It's just a little below zero. Look on your secondary counter over here to make sure that you're not off by a turn or something also when you're first starting. And so this one is low. We are low by about 50, about uh, 50 thousandths, which means we need to move by 25. Now, we can do it by going back and forth like we were on the round piece, but on something where it's square and you're moving stuff, that's harder. So it pays to lean over, get in the way of the camera and go to the back that way. It's just easier. Then we come that up to 25, roll it. Yeah, it's pretty close to the 75 mark there. And I'll go ahead and I'll, we'll set that to zero again. So we have a new zero. So pretty close to the zero. And that's just a little off of the 17 mark. We'll come over here and we're off pretty close. Kind of it's rolling. The tip is rolling a little bit depending on which way it goes. We could be off by a thousandth. We're off by a half probably anyway. But we also know where we're going to go. So now since we have equal sides, we can gain a whole lot doing the next side and we can just bring it up to that same zero. We don't really even have to go back and forth to start with. So there we're just uh, half a thousandth under. The opposite one, which is not precision, we're right at zero. We're two over. So it's moved a little as we went. Yeah, and we're a little under. So our zero is pretty close. Doesn't have to be perfect, especially since we're just dialing this in to not machine on it. But um, we can tighten that down closer to the zero there. And that's coming up real close to zero. Not that zero is critical. Yeah, now we're coming up just over. So my actual shoot four point should be about a quarter of a thousandth over zero. Close enough. We're not going to worry about it. We're going to get on with some more instruction of other ideas for dialing in. The square stock is not actually all that accurate anyway. If I got it that close there, it would be wrong by the time I got out here. So, about hexagons. Hexagon would be pretty darn nice in our three-jaw chuck, wouldn't it? We go back to our, oh yeah, our good old three-jaw chuck. Well, darn them. When they made these, they made these for production. And try and make it to make it happy for you. And a lot of people, oh, it's cheap, cheap, cheap. Bolt. No, they make this, they forge this all in one piece. And this could be off as much as 10 thousandths of an inch with this for run out on a very good bolt and some low grade bolts will be out by a 16th of an inch. So don't ever think that this head is true. Just even if your jaws and this was accurately formed, it ain't gonna be true. Now, so again, our four jaw. Now, if we have a four jaw that has the jaws, cause you see, we're gonna be on two flats. 
and then we're going to be on two points. So if you have the four jaw that has the serrated jaws with a serrated groove right down the middle, yeah, problem. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to lay a piece of shim stock on these sides here so that they don't grip as good. You can still use your grippy ones for the other two sides. And now if you are on something that you can't get messed up, you're going to have to put stuff on all sides so that you're not making grip marks in your part. But normally the uh, stuff you're doing with a bolt head is not going to have to be all that precise. And on this one here, it's not a problem. And I kind of was causing myself a problem for my rough dial in just to start with there because as I was moving the jaw, I was also rolling the bolt back and forth. I kept rolling it to a different position, which was not helping my cause at all. Okay, so we got that eye bolt in there. We're going to concern ourselves with the shank portion. And also, these are not absolutely um, true with these most of the time, too. You will see bolts where they are dead on, and they'll have a ground surface on here. Um, but those are very special bolts. And, and that's besides the shoulder bolts. Shoulder bolts is another thing, too, where they actually have a machined larger diameter here with a shoulder that this locks down to that's precision. But even on a standard bolt, there are some that are precision here, but you'll, you'll know it. They're, they're pretty. Okay, so which one do I want to do first? I think I want to do the points first. Okay, I'm at 50 there, and I'm going minus, minus, minus a whole bunch. Okay. Uh, I got 10. Sometimes it's easy to do that. And sometimes just because you want to, um, you roll it back and forth and just do little bits. It gets too boring to just do it exactly the same way every time. That's close to 60. It may not be round. I'm down at 61, 60 ish, 60 and a half, 59. Oops. Okay. It's not quite round there either, you can see, but eh, relatively lined up. Okay, now we have one that we had put in our <coughs> ambi cooler solvent tank to cool things to ambient temperature because it was a little warm since I pulled it out of the uh, mill. And now what do we do? Now what, oh, what do we do? 